want to know about my life? So nosy. So nosy. Well, I'll tell you. I was born in Baltimore, Maryland on July the 2nd, 1908, in what was called a nice colored neighborhood in Baltimore, Division Street around Pennsylvania Avenue. My mother and my father were both hard workers. My mother was a school teacher, and my father worked for the B&O Railroad, which in those days was a good job for a colored man. They both insisted that my brother and I get an education. They were so adamant about that. I had an older brother by the name of Aubrey who just seemed to do everything right. Uh, any of you the oldest in your family? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You get pressed into being executive director whether you want to or not. And Aubrey made life very hard for me. He was so successful. He did everything right. He went to school and actually did strange things like study. And when I went to school, I went to play pinochle and look at the girls. I was kind of tall and cute. And you know, it was, uh, well, that's how I learned geometry. And, uh, but my mother always said, now Thurgood, you be sure you study those books because that's the ticket to a successful future. And my father just backed it up, you know. Boy, you better get over there and read them books now. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you again. And my father, when he had a break from the B&O Railroad, would take us down to the courthouse, what you all call the Mitchell Courthouse today, so that we could watch justice being done. And of course, the first thing we notice is we have to sit in the back of that courthouse to watch the proceedings. There is some justice for you. But we watched all kinds of trials, civil trials criminal trials, murder, petty larceny, and then we'd come home and discuss it, which is about the only time I could discuss anything controversial with my father, because you know how fathers were in that generation. They had the last word, even if it wasn't the right word. And if you objected too strenuously, they would, well, let me put it this way, they would put some Zoom in your Fruit of the Looms. <laughs> but that's how we learned about the law. And my brother Aubrey was interested more in science. And when he went to school, we went to the school that was called a normal school, a colored normal school. Now, that was the most ridiculous term for a school I had ever heard. There was nothing normal about it. It was segregated. It was inferior to the white school. And they had nerve enough to call it a normal school. I figured after a while, they just said, let's just go on and call it Frederick Douglass or something reasonable. And we went to that school. And every time I would get on the teacher's nerves, which was quite pretty frequently, the teacher would send me down in the basement where the furnace is with a copy of the Constitution and make me memorize portions of the Constitution in the basement. I want to tell you, by the time I graduated from Frederick Douglass High School, I never knew every word in that Constitution. <laughs> I didn't know what it meant, but I knew every word in that Constitution. Now, Audrey, and I didn't get along all that well. He was just too much to follow. He went up there to Lincoln University about an hour and a half from Baltimore up there in Oxford, Pennsylvania. And he studied all those exotic subjects, biology and chemistry and subjects that I even had trouble spelling. And he put a lot of pressure on me back there behind him. But my mother said, Thurgood, what are you going to do when you graduate from high school? Well, Mom, I'm going to do what most boys do when they graduate from high school. They go to work. See, back in those days, in the teens and 20s, you didn't automatically go to college when you came out of high school. You went to work. So going to college was a big thing. Audrey had already gone to college. He was doing well up there at Lincoln. So I eventually applied and got accepted at Lincoln University. And when I got up there, there were about 150, 200 colored male students up there at that school but not a single colored teacher, not one, not one. Most of them were white teachers who had graduate degrees or undergraduate degrees from places like Oberlin, Yale, Michigan, and it just seemed that they were there to do their practice teaching on us, uh, and, and we objected, privately to ourselves, of course. 